Hey everyone, I'm Sean, and I'm a foster parent and adoptive parent, and I think it's one of the most rewarding experiences you can have, and I'm here to share everything you need to know to get started. So you may be thinking about foster parenting, and you're not sure if it's for you. Well, I'm going to share my thought process, my experience, and hopefully inspire you to think about it. So... First uh, question is, why do we need foster parents? Well, there are an unbelievable number of kids that need support. Sometimes parents go through a rough patch and it's just not safe for the kids. And there is a whole network of foster care workers and social workers and therapists that kind of step up and help these children in need. It's, it's kind of an invisible network. You don't hear about them unless something bad happens. Then they're in the newspaper. But unfortunately, um, the good work that they do doesn't get nearly as much publicity. I mean, these folks work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and really do everything they can to make sure that the kids that are at risk are given a safe environment. That's why we need foster parents, because there are too many kids and not enough foster parents to provide shelter and support and care for these kids. So that's something to think about. If you're not sure if it's for you, that's a reasonable expectation. A lot of times people feel like they're not up to the challenge, or maybe they don't have their stuff together enough to be a good foster parent. But I'm here to tell you, you don't need to worry about that. You know, if you're the least bit interested in being a foster parent, what you need to do is reach out to your state's agency for uh, child protection, put your name on the list, and they'll reach out to you and they will work with you to figure out what makes sense for you. And so I'm going to share a little bit about my experience being a foster parent here in New Jersey. Um, I started the process as a single person and just like you, I wasn't sure if I had it in me to do it. I wasn't sure if I was qualified to do it. So um, two things kind of pushed me to make the call. Uh, the first was that a cousin adopted as a single person, and that made it seem like it was a reasonable thing to do. I, I always felt like you needed to have a partner to be a foster parent or adopt, and doing it as a single person would be too difficult. But my cousin showed me that it's definitely possible. Of course, you need your family and your network of support to help you cover you when you know you need the help. But fostering and adopting as a single person is absolutely uh, a thing. The other um, thing that came up is a bit sad, but this was in the 90s in New York City. And it was kind of at the tail end of the AIDS crisis in New York City. And I just remember reading an article in, in the paper, and it was a statistic that said that because of the AIDS crisis in New York, there were going to be 50,000 children who were now orphans because they lost both parents to AIDS. And that just touched my heart. I, I just did not see how a child could deal with that, you know, that, that unfathomable loss. And that kind of stuck in my head as this is something I have to do to help. Um, because again, there are so many kids across the country in the cities and in the rural areas. There are so many kids that need support and need help. And we really do need those foster parents to step up. So that's my story. Um, everybody's got a different story about why they want to do it. But the thing is, you know, we do need these foster parents to step up. So if you're the least bit interested, don't hesitate, sign up and find out more. So let's talk a little bit about the process. If you do sign up, again, I, I did this process in New Jersey. And my experience was that once you put your name on the list, a worker will call you and interview you. And then they will do a home study where they come and they look at your environment and they figure out whether it's going to work and how many kids you could do. And at least the way it worked in New Jersey, they like to license you once you're done with the process. And basically they will license you for the maximum number of kids that you have enough space for in the home. And they have, you know, um, uh, criteria, 
you know, the size of the bedrooms, how many bedrooms and all that. And they will figure out the maximum number of kids that you are licensed to take in that space. And that doesn't mean you have to take that many kids. That doesn't mean you have to take that many kids. That just means that you're licensed for that many because they don't want to have to come back and redo all of this if you decide to take a few more kids. So that's the process in New Jersey. Um, you get the home study and then you also have to do some classes. And in those classes, you learn about the kids. You learn about some of the challenges that you may encounter with these kids. Some of the kids are traumatized. Some of the kids have issues, physical ailments, you know, medical conditions, you know, as much as the caseworkers know, they will share that with you so that you can be prepared to decide whether that's something you can take on. Um, you know, so once you're finished with the trainings and you have the home study and you pass a background check, fingerprinting to make sure you're not a felon or a risk to the children, you'll have a license. And then you're in the system as a licensed foster parent. Then you wait. And at some point, they'll give you a call and they'll say, hello, we have a child that needs care. This is the story. This is the duration that we expect. It can be temporary respite care where it's just for the weekend because the normal foster parents, for whatever reason, need a break. Maybe they were going out of the country or something. So they just need a temporary shelter for the kids just for the weekend. That's one extreme. The other extreme is we don't know how long the kids are, are going to be in your care. And they'll tell you the details. Maybe it's one child. Maybe, maybe it's a sibling group. The ages you know, other things you need to know. And then you decide whether that's going to work for you or not. You don't have to take the kids. You can always say, I don't think so. Not at this time. That's perfectly reasonable. Um, but you know, you're, you're in control. You know, once you have the license and they start calling you, you're not obligated to take the kids until you feel like it's a good match for your particular needs. Um, I will say you have to be flexible. You can't go into this saying, I want to adopt a baby that looks like this and I want to, it can't have any conditions. And, you know, you can't go into it with an expectation that you're going to have one particular kid, one particular type of kid. That's not how the system works. You know, it's basically just a, 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 a large set of kids that need homes and they go through the system and, you know, look at it from their perspective. You know, they're removed from their homes. They're separated from their parent or parents. They're scared and they need some comfort and security and structure and love, right? Um, it's really about them. It's not about the foster parents. Um, that's not to say you can't go into it with a hope that at some point you'll be able to adopt or you'll be able to do X, Y, and Z you know, have X number of kids, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a goal or a hope that in the future you'll get to something, but you can't go into it thinking, well, I did these things and I want to do, you know, I want to have my newborn. <laughs> that's not how that works. So you have to be flexible. That's, uh, that's what I would say. And that's something that a lot of people say is a challenge, giving up the kid, you know, basically having the kid stay with you for some amount of time and then they say, well, it's time for the kid to go home. How devastating is that for the foster parents? Um, it's challenging. I will say that much. Um, the important thing to keep in mind is this is for the kids. It's really, you know, what's best for the kids. If the caseworkers feel like the parents or parent have cleaned up their act and the, the kids are good to go, that's the kids, that's, it, it's the best thing for the kids. And, you know, it's one of those things, it's a little bit challenging for us as foster parents, but it's such a huge, huge, um, blessing for the foster kid to be reunited. And the caseworkers will stay in touch with the, the children and monitor them to make sure that the home environment is actually stable and improved. So there's that, um, so, you know, that's one way to kind of manage the disappointment or sadness of having a foster kid leave your home. Um, I will share the challenge for me or the challenge for my husband and I was we had a foster child that was in our home for two years. 
which is the maximum, basically, before the kid can go up for adoption. And, you know, it was kind of, un it was unexpected that it was that long. And there was just a lot of um, confusion because it wasn't, you know, things are not clear. Cle things are not written in stone. Um, the the process, the, the, the court process, the judge, the parent who needs to re get rehabilitated, things go up, things go down, you know, plans change. So there's a lot of unpredictability. And that's why I was saying you need to be flexible as a foster parent. You can't go into it with a plan and expect everybody to kind of adhere to your plan. That is not going to work. You have to be flexible and open and loving and supportive. Um, you know, when you meet these caseworkers, you'll see just how many people are really working so hard to do the best they can for these kids. And that'll inspire you to kind of have the same helpful attitude. Um, you know, the kids that we had were all wonderful. One was challenging and we knew that going in. Um, but the other kids were all like perfectly normal kids, really, really adorable kids that, you know, we really loved having in our home. And, you know, you get to do things with them on the weekends, like take them to the park, go camping, you know, all sorts of things. Um, you know, every state is different. Um, you know, uh, at least here in New Jersey, as long as you're within the state lines, you could take the kids anywhere you wanted on the weekends, you know, for weekend trips, camping or whatever, visiting other family and friends and, you know, giving the kids experiences that they might not have in the past. And that's that was really nice to see kind of how, you know, you ex expose the kids to new experiences and, you know, make their world a little bigger and give them more imagination in terms of what's possible for their futures. Um, that's a you know real positive thing. Also in New Jersey, you know, in my experience, um, they really try hard to give the foster child the same experiences that regular kids have. So, for example, if if you know you think summer camp is a good idea, but you know the cost is a little high, you can talk to them and they will try to negotiate and try to come up with some type of um, stipend to help offset the cost of the summer camp. Or if you're going on a vacation let's say, you know, um, a, a vacation to some kind of water park that's very costly, um, you can let them know and they will actually try to find it in the budget to kind of help pay for the kid's ticket to go to the water park so they have that same experience. So, you know, there's really so many things that you can do as a foster parent to help these kids have better lives and, you know, kind of um, positive things in the midst of the chaos and the, the the confusion and trauma of being removed from their 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 birth parent um, you know that's really the the, the the magic that foster parents can ha have with these kids basically improving a bad situation so that it's not so bad for these kids so hopefully um, that was helpful <clears throat> this is my first uh, video talking about this um, as I said, I was a, a foster parent on and off for over 15 years, and um, we actually adopted through the system, you know, with the same agency, uh, the, the state agency here in New Jersey. And that's probably going to be another video. So if uh, this inspired you, let me know. Put it in the comments. Let me know your story. Are you thinking about fostering? Have you done it? Did it work out? Uh, I'm curious to know. And if you have any um, questions about this topic, put them in the comments. And uh, please subscribe and follow the playlist for the next video on this topic, which will be either here or there. I don't know. So thanks very much. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.